Too often our young people are attempting suicide. It is now the second leading cause of death for the ages 10 to 24. Tonight I talk with the Fisher's father who lost his daughter to suicide and he wants to share advice for every parent to hear. You know, it's been five years. I still think there's a cultural issue, right, with suicide. I think we're afraid to talk about it. Mike uh, Rekoff lost his teenage daughter, Peyton, to suicide. It's a complete shock because they just don't see that coming, and that's, that's the, the fear. I would never have guessed she would have taken her own life. He's since learned even beautiful, smart, athletic, and popular people like Peyton can feel there is no hope. I show her picture because I, I show that that's the face of suicide with her smiling and um, she doesn't look depressed and, and that's the, you know, that's the goal is to say it's, we have kids masking their, their illness right now and hiding from it. Now this dad feels compelled to act and educate. Suicide discussions lead to less suicides. Um, it's not going to plant their, a seed in their brain. Um, matter of fact, if that seed's already there, this could actually help them. So this tournament is very important to me personally. He runs an annual softball tournament called Play for Peyton to raise awareness of teen suicide. He attends walks and talks. He is driven to save your child. Teenagers are going through so much that um, they can come across as defiant or stubborn or just aggravated, right, in a bad mood, um, you know, especially when the hormones start flying, right? So it's very difficult to see through that, right? Is that just normal teenage behavior or is there something else going on? He wants you to know that signs of depression include disorganized sleep, withdrawing from favorite activities and friends, persistent sadness, digestive issues, Peyton had all of these and a few more. And we did a lot. We, we, we tried to take care of her depression and mental health disorders, um, you know, starting about her junior year. He encourages parents to engage, to look for signs, and to act on them by to getting get the their child professional sure help. So why not send them to a counselor and a therapist to, uh, to get those skills that they need and really push them, I mean, even drag them there if they have to, because most kids will uh, object to it at first because of the stigma, because they don't think they need it. But I usually say, you don't want to end up in my place. Um, drag them there if you have to. On our website at WTHR.com, we have got links where you can learn about the Peyton Rekoff Foundation. And also, it's a place where men who are struggling can reach out and learn about a series of Building a Refuge events. And it will kick off with a talk with our very own Bob Kravitz. Yeah, there's also some training that you can take to help you recognize and address those who may be thinking about suicide. This training is called QPR, which stands for Question, Persuade, and Refer. I took this training along with some of our colleagues last week. It took a couple of hours, but it really helps you have that conversation yeah. to, kind, to, to reach out to somebody, right. ask that question, do, are you thinking about harming yourself? Uh, would you like to seek help? Let mm -hmm. me take you and refer you to a place where yeah. You can have hope and you can get through this. You know, the dad said, you know, there are, there are bad days and there are good days, but there's good in every bad day, mm. and it, it helps you see that. It's not enough to ask, how are you feeling? You need to ask these specific questions. Specific questions, right, right. and this training helps you with that dialogue. It's, it, it's kind of tricky. We try mm. to role play with each other, and, right. and it, it's harder than you think, and that's why this training really helps. So if you or someone you know is struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts, there are ways to reach out for help. Be sure to visit HaveHope.com. Community Health Network has put together resources for teens, young adults, and parents, along with a list of phone numbers you can call or text for help. We'll be right back.